In the beginning, Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin, a digital currency and blockchain that would go on to change the global financial system. A decentralized, digitally scarce cryptocurrency on a distributed ledger, Bitcoin became the purest form of money. But soon after, a new giant was born. Ethereum, which took the principles and technology behind Bitcoin to the next level, added the ability to store not only data, but entire programs called smart contracts in this ledger. In the year 2016, one of these programs was hacked, which had several consequences. First, many in the Ethereum community decided to fork the chain and split away from the original in order to return the stolen money. The new, irregular chain kept the Ethereum name and branding, but a group of developers decided to continue the original Ethereum blockchain and call it Ethereum Classic in keeping with the founding philosophies of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, such as trust minimization and immutability. The fourth chain that we now call Ethereum is soon going to make another major transition to increase retail scalability, and it will be called Ethereum 2.0. The aforementioned hack, the hack of the DAO, was supposed to destroy Ethereum Classic. And ETC has been attacked on several other occasions since, each time becoming more secure and resilient, with even more security updates in the works. The new Ethereum is moving further and further away from the original design, but the legacy chain has been outperforming Bitcoin and Ethereum in 2021. Let's take a look at some of its foundational technology and principles. Then we'll address the differences between Ethereum 2.0 and Ethereum Classic. And finally, forecast the price of this puppy. Stay tuned. We can break down Ethereum Classic into seven technological components. Now, for the duration of this video, I will be using a lot of research from Donald McIntyre, a highly respected expert and pioneer in the industry. This brief video will be more or less an overview, but if you want to get a real education on ETC, I'll leave a link to his website in the description box below. So, these components include the following. A ledger with accounts and balances. This ledger is called a blockchain, and I spoke more in depth about what that is in this video, but the ETC blockchain is essentially a database that tracks the movements of the system's cryptocurrency and contains the software programs executed in the virtual machine, a cryptocurrency. In the aforementioned video, I explained what a cryptocurrency is, but in this case, it is the token moved between accounts within the ledger. Each unit is called an Ether, or an ETC token, and is used as a store of value. This token has the same principles as Bitcoin, with the same technology as Ethereum, and since Bitcoin is considered digital gold, Ethereum Classic can be considered programmable digital gold. The same cannot be said about Ethereum, but we will get more into that later. Programs. Ethereum Classic can store programs called smart contracts that can be executed for a fee in its virtual machine. These smart contracts can be used to power decentralized applications, move large amounts of value according to certain user-determined conditions, or for people, businesses, governments, or even banks to enter into high-value agreements. A virtual machine. Every node in the ETC network has a virtual machine, which is part of the Ethereum Classic software, in charge of processing all of the programs in the ledger. While it works like a single computer, it is a decentralized system made up of thousands of machines all around the world. A programming language. Just like the apps we use every day are coded in different programming languages, Ethereum Classic has its own programming language called Solidity that developers use to build decentralized applications on top of the network. A gas system to pay for computing. This gas system is essentially the way miners get paid for their computational efforts on top of the block reward. 
If a transaction requires, for example, 100 units of computation or 100 gas, and each unit costs a certain amount in ETC, let's just use the number 1 to make it easy even though it wouldn't be that high, the computation will cost 100 ETC. In reality, we're dealing with fractions of a token for the most part. And finally, decentralized applications. These applications run on top of ETC, which means that even though the programs that power these apps are securely stored on the blockchain, decentralized application interfaces themselves can be run on your device or even on remote platforms that can be accessed through a browser. The underlying programs that power these apps are distributed in thousands of computers. These programs, as well as the data and processors, are replicated and located all around the world and therefore don't have a single point of failure, which means nobody, not even a corporation or government, can stop these programs from operating. Here's a graphic from etherplan.com to put this all together for you. Possibly the most important thing to take away from this video is the Ethereum Classic Trinity, the three key features of ETC that make it, in my opinion, the most valuable cryptocurrency in existence. The first of these features is the ability to execute smart contracts, which we spoke about earlier. These are decentralized programs that enable contracts between people and businesses, machine-to-machine -machine interactions without the need of risky and costly cloud services, and decentralized applications for finance and many other uses. The second feature is the proof-of-work consensus mechanism, which is how new blocks are added to the blockchain and therefore how transactions are verified. In this process, computers expend energy using a hashing algorithm to find a certain number given a difficulty target, which sets the amount of time it will take to find this number. The miner who finds that number is awarded the block reward. Proof-of-work is the most secure and complete consensus mechanism, albeit less scalable than its alternatives. The final feature of the Trinity is Ethereum Classic's fixed monetary policy. Because ETC has a fixed monetary policy, we can know exactly how many ETC tokens there will ever be, and what the block reward will be for miners at any given date. For more information on Ethereum Classic's monetary policy and everything else in this video, click the link in the description. Here is a diagram of the Ethereum Classic Trinity from Etherplan. Bitcoin and ETC have the last two features of this trinity in common, while it shares the ability to execute smart contracts with Ethereum. Before we compare and contrast ETC and Ethereum 2.0, let's take a look at the foundational principles of Ethereum Classic. These are trust minimization, immutability, fungibility, finality, censorship resistance, permissionlessness, auditability, reconcilability, least authority, and backwards compatibility. In the words of McIntyre, each of these principles has a specific function in guaranteeing sound money, property, and agreements on the platform, even in the absence of higher authorities, which is precisely the desired state of affairs. So now that we have looked at the technological components, key features, and foundational principles of Ethereum Classic, let's see how it stacks up against Ethereum 2.0. As you can see, both platforms are smart contract cryptocurrencies, but that is where their similarities end for the sake of this comparison. Ethereum 2.0 switches from the highly secure proof-of-work consensus mechanism to the highly efficient proof-of-stake mechanism. It also has a variable monetary policy, which means the door is left open for changes, meaning there can eventually be more total Ethereum tokens to inflate the currency through less scarcity, and it also makes it far less decentralized. For this reason, Ethereum 2.0 will no longer compete with gold like Bitcoin and Ethereum Classic, but instead it will compete with fiat. You'll also notice that Ethereum Classic has a replicated database while Ethereum 2.0 has a fragmented database. This is yet another security sacrifice Ethereum makes for efficiency. In ETC, the blockchain database is stored in every node of the network, while Ethereum will be fragmenting the database into smaller groups of nodes through a process called sharding. Here is an illustration of Ethereum's move away from high security over to high performance. Also credit to Etherplan. Now when we say Ethereum 2.0 is high performance, that doesn't really make ETC low performance. Right now, if we never even increase its scalability, which we inevitably will, ETC can handle 680,000 transactions per day, which is more than the Federal Reserve wire network. The security performance trade-off actually turns out to be beneficial for both sides. 
Ethereum 2.0 becomes optimal for low value, high volume transactions, while ETC becomes optimal for high value, low volume transactions. With Ethereum's move to proof of stake, this makes a lot of room for Ethereum miners to switch to ETC as they have been doing at a record level. Ethereum Classic will pretty much have a monopoly over proof of work or layer one smart contract platforms, which makes it foundational to the future of cryptocurrency. With that said, let's take a look at the long-term outlook of ETC. So this market cycle, we have seen Ethereum Classic rise from a low of just below $3 to 184 bucks on Coinbase and even higher on other exchanges like Robinhood. This cycle is nowhere near over, even though we've had some dips. And by the end of this bull market, I would expect a $500 to $1,000 ETC. Over the next 10 years, though, you can expect that number to be around $34,000, according to some predictions. This graphic from Etherplan predicts the local top in price for ETC for this bull market, as well as the next two cycles. You can find the article with the full thesis for these predictions in the link I have repeatedly urged you to check out. McIntyre has accurately predicted the price of Ethereum Classic to the point where at first I thought he was overly optimistic and that we wouldn't even see the prices we're at today, but now I realize he has been right all along. This has been a fundamental analysis of Ethereum Classic, but if you want me to provide some technical updates on price action, let me know down in the comments below, leave a thumbs up if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, and check out etherplan.com for an endless supply of knowledge. Like I said, the link is down below.